temptation. Read with me. We'll read verse 8 and then I'll continue. One to read. Again, the devil taketh him up into, stop, not towards, into. The devil taketh him. Who is the him? Your Jesus. Taketh him into an exceeding high mountain. And what happened when they got to that mountain? He stood from that mountain and saw the glory of the entire earth. That there is a mountain a man can stand. And from that mountain you can see the glory of the whole earth. This is the mountain that Satan took Jesus. There were many mountains. But he knew only one would be worth tempting Jesus in. And he took Jesus to that mountain. The Bible calls it an exceeding high mountain. And then he showed him the kingdoms of this world and the glory of them. Next verse. And saith to him, ah, all these things, what things? The kingdoms and the glories I will give thee. So the mountain is a place of exchange. Listen, remember, don't forget our scripture. Well, well, I'm building something here. Go up to the mountain. Something you will do in the mountain will give you wood. Use that wood and come down. Come and build the house of God. And the Bible says God will be glorified. So Satan is negotiating a transaction here. But there was a location. He said, Jesus, I want to talk to you. But let's go up the mountain. We don't do these kinds of discussion on a plain land. He took him to an exceeding high mountain where it was only two of them. And then he says, this is, I want to give. That one is a deception. Because when you give something and demand something, it's not giving. It's business. He used a very deceptive terminology. He says, I will give thee if thou will fall down. I will give you pure water if you will give me hundred naira. Is, is, that, is that charity? No. Satan is negotiating something with Jesus. Your Jesus. And look at the interesting system. He starts by marketing something for him. He says, before we talk, see first. So that you will believe me. Look at the kingdoms. And then look at their glories. The wealth. And then he says, now that you have seen and are convinced, let us discuss. This is my proposal. I will give you access from this mountain to all these kingdoms. They will be at your beck and call. What I will get in return. Listen carefully is that you will fall down and worship me. Now imagine, God forbid, but just imagine that Jesus agreed. What do you think would have happened? Jesus would have come down that mountain with strange influence that you cannot explain. You, now you were not there. All you know is that he bowed down and said, Satan, I'm more interested in the kingdom and the glory. Oh, King Satan, I acknowledge you as my Lord. I give you my heart. And Satan says, okay, as I agreed. If Satan tempted Jesus, how many other people has he taken to that mountain? To say, come, forget about this. Let me show you how things happen in this earth. And then he says, look at this. I will give you these kingdoms and the glory. Bow down to me. Not everybody will say no. Some people will say yes and will say this is the deal. Here you have, here you have. Go down. Immediately they go down. In two months, their albums are all over the world. Regardless of what they sing. And you say, my God, this guy is so skilled. No. Something happened up the mountain. I pray that God will open your eyes to understand what I'm teaching you tonight. There are certain dimensions of the supplies of God that cannot happen by doing business with men. You must do business with spirits. I cast my crown before... Listen. 
the highest royalty remember that's what satan wanted bow down and worship me satan has been obsessed with allegiance and loyalty the kingdoms did not mean anything to him the glories did not mean anything to him but he knows that it is the system that men need and so what he decided to do was to make sure that he has control of those systems and then he will continue to call men to say let us negotiate what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world question where did that business happen that he gained the whole world because that is a business terminology what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world where is the look show me where men gain the whole world do they gain it in a bank do they gain it in an investment house show me where men gain the whole world and give up their soul that business when you get there the commodity is your soul versus the world not your product your soul and the world 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 so you now know that he says i wish above all things that you prosper but i hope your soul too was not lost while you are prospering i hope that the way you prospered was god's own way i know how you are prospered when your soul does not prosper it was exchanged for your wealth sit down sit down sit down Yabone naka Sujada ne na Sarkin salama Sarkin My concern is not your prosperity. I can know what kind of exchange happened by looking at your soul. Immediately I look at your money. The next thing I should look at is your soul. If I find out that your spiritual life went down, there was an exchange that happened on the mountain. Whether you are aware or not, you have followed a system that has sold your soul. There are many, sit down please. There are many men of God. There are many businessmen. There are many captains of industry that gave, received the world and sold their soul. This temptation Satan gave Jesus was not the last time he would give it. He has been giving it till today. So he says, I wish above all things that you will prosper. But I will know how the prosperity came not by looking at the money. But looking at your soul when i i see both your soul and your pocket rising i know where that grace came from it can't be the devil the devil will never allow your pocket and your soul to rise at the same time so i look at your prosperity and then i look at your soul i see that in your rising you gave up your values you gave up your character you gave up your family you gave up your integrity i know that there is a negotiation happening you are giving your soul for mundane things are we together look what jesus did verse 10 ah. jesus said get thee then satan for it is written thou shalt worship the lord thy god and him only shall thou serve what was satan looking for allegiance satan does not need money he does not want money so apostle why is it that satan why is it that there is difficulty in meeting our bills at home satan knows that men cannot endure hardship indefinitely so he manipulates the economy and waits for you on that mountain he knows that when the pain becomes too much and your church cannot build the pastor will say i thank god for this but i prophesy sam bring one million remember that's not how he started but because of the pain we need money generator needs to be fueled fast 
And now I'm at a point, we brought a man of God abroad and we cannot pay him. So Sam, bring one million, bring two million. So I see the church's financing rising, but I look at the soul of the members. So I know that an exchange has happened. The pastor negotiated an exchange. I, I, I'm not saying this in a critical way. The greatest dread of Satan is that you prosper while your soul prospers. What then is his gain? Think how annoying it will be for me. As a businessman, this is what I'm selling. Look up, please. And then, I see you hold both money and my product. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Now, you think what that will do to me. My advantage has been ruined. You have shown me I don't need you. That's the statement that this is happening. And so when you can have a prosperous soul and you are empowered economically, are we together? You get up in the morning and say, my children, we are waiting upon the Lord today. Yet the increment in the school fees does not affect the prayer because the resources are there. Glory be to God. Satan says, what then is my entry point in this family? Thank you. Is God speaking to someone? What shall it profit a man? Please listen to this message. Because I promise you, every one of us, you will climb that mountain. I got, listen, listen, listen. You may climb that mountain and come back with wood. Or you can climb that mountain and come back as a soulless person. That on that mountain, Satan will give you mundane things. And after 30 years of wealth and affluence and increase, you will find out that you are on your way to hell. This message is a deliverance to the body of Christ. Listen to me. I can tell you that Satan hates what you are hearing. I call it the warfare dimension of kingdom wealth. Where the product is your soul versus the world. Hmm. Your soul. Did you ever hear that they sell souls? Hey, Jimmy is a businessman. Where do you say? I know they sell pure water. Is that true? I know they sell clothes. But he's saying there is a marketplace on earth where the commodity of exchange is the soul of man. Not slave trade was only a mimicking. Of something that was already in the realm of the spirit if it's not in your presence if it's not by your hands if it's not by your spirit don't let me have it everything i need is in you hallelujah revelations 18 read for me from verse 9 we're reading 9 to 13 babylon as a woman that jezebel that sits upon the horse the bible tells us she's not only a prophetess she's a businesswoman babylon the kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Verse 10. Standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, is falling. For in one hour is your judgment come. 11. And the merchants... Who are those who will cry? The businessmen of the earth. How did they become rich? The Bible says the, the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Their prosperity was tied to their, their connection with her. Whatever happened to Babylon happened to their business. Are you following me please? 
What are her merchandise? Look at, these are the products that this woman deals in. Are you ready, believers? Number one, gold and silver and precious stones and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, thyan wood, all manner of ivory, all manner of vessels of most precious wood, brass, iron, marble, tartine, mm. cinnamon, odors, ointment, frankincense, wine. Babylon also sells anointing, oil. Did you see it there? And fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses. Help me now, read together. And chariots and slaves and souls of men. Babylon. Any one of these products you want, she can give you. Give me the souls of men. So that my track, when I produce anything, it will get everywhere. And she says, the condition, bow to me. That exchange happens on that mountain. While it's happening, you don't know. The next thing, you just sit down and find out that your soul is glued to their music. The, you, you, there's nothing you can do. You just find out that you bite. You are even minding yourself. The next thing, you are nodding your head. Ah, God, forgive me. You don't even know what is happening. The souls of men. What kind of a businesswoman is this that does both physical and spiritual business sells gold sells anointing for you you want anointing for ministry she can give you too <sighs> but you always know that it is her product by one single litmus test as the wealth grows your soul dies your wealth and your soul cannot grow together when you do business with her i wish above all things koinonia tell me you are getting blessed tonight so when your soul is going down and then there is increase coming could it be that an exchange has happened on that mountain what shall it profit a man if he gains gains loses gain loses business terminologies you can gain the whole world and then you lose your soul is god speaking to us there is an assault of darkness listen over the body of christ and let me tell you this Many people in this country do not know how to prosper God's way. And that includes men of God. Listen to me. I have a responsibility to teach you the truth. Many people do not know how to prosper God's way. And right now that the systems that provide for things like corruption and the rest, the civilization of the world is making men more vocal now. The things they could not say before, they can now say. That means if the truth is not taught, the church alongside the territory is in trouble. There are many men today who became rich by stealing and investing. They don't know anything. They cannot mentor you to be wealthy. They only stole money from some political scoffers and then had that money and had a business partner who helped them to invest the money. And now they are rich. You may call them businessmen. You may call them millionaires and billionaires. But they have negotiated something. They cannot raise another generation. So right now there's confusion. People love God but they are hungry. Hunger is moving like the angel of death. Are we together now? One by one is meeting families. Some of you as you are seated right here. If I told you, stand up, let me give you a prophecy that tomorrow will change your financial life. You will be surprised that without your will, you will find yourself standing up. That's to tell you how hard this thing is becoming. Are we together? There are students probably sitting here now that it will take the grace of God. I cannot tell you, literally without exaggeration, hundreds of text messages by people 
apostle help our family our rent our this apostle we just finished three days dry you see it there that thing is supposed to be a mockery to the name of the lord we just finished three days dry and god could not solve our hunger problem and then the people continue to contemplate what kind of god is this oh And Satan says, that's exactly what I want. Because let me tell you, when, come Sam, when Sam continues to say, help me, help me, and I say I cannot help him, one day he will stop calling me. He stops calling me because someone else has held his hand and says, let's go to the mountain. You can't keep begging forever. Let me show you. Give me your soul and I will give you tea and bread. He will try it one year and it will not work. He will say, okay, go. I will come back. He will wait till the hunger increases and say, I'm still here. A day will come, that hunger will hit you. And like Esau, you will say, please, what is a portage? What, what do you think happened to Esau? Do you not know that Satan waited until Esau was hungry? Satan always comes to men when they are hungry. He waits until you are hungry. Then he comes with his suggestion. It's a business strategy. Any businessman will tell you that people don't negotiate at the point of convenience. You wait until there is a need. Then you say, okay, here I am again. I told you to sell me the land. You say it was 400,000. Okay, it's because you have food. When the economy hits you, then I bring 250 cash. And then you say, Kai, my wife, what did you say? That Just bring this thing. That's what Satan does. So as a young student who is being rewarded by your parents, you don't sow yet, you reap. And then you are laughing and say, all oh, this finance thing, I don't, I don't mind. And then the next thing, you see a lady and you want to marry her and Satan says, exactly, let the plan work. He will help facilitate your marriage, not because he likes your marriage. He knows that when you are married, a child will come and the reality will dawn on you.